Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm in the process of creating a compound object. The compound object is basically a single object and within there it has a number of objects. So this will be a single object. So you can see the loft there. If I created say a number of cross sections through here and let's give it a count of something like 10 on both sides and okay. Then if I hide the loft, and also hide the sketches within. This is a compound. And you can see that if I click on it, go over to the part and check geometry. Run checks, and if we look at the shape content, we see it's a compound. So there's multiple items in here that are contained within one. Compounds can be exploded. So I click on the loft, go to part, compounds, explode. So we have the individual items. And we can take all those and say, extrude them along the z-axis. And we'll give it a extrusion of say three millimeters. So at the moment, this is an object, this is an object, and this is an object. If I take all those extrudes, like so, part, compound, make compound, creates a single object. Now there's some advantages for compounds if we're using such workbench as Lattice 2. Let's say that I've created all these and we saw how I created them, but we want to CNC or laser cut them. We would need to basically place these in some kind of pattern and zero out the placement so they're all along one plane. So if we look at this one and view toggle axis cross, we can see that's not even on that plane there. So we drew a plane here, then we got to collapse all these on that plane and place them along there to allow us to zero that placement and export them out. We can do this quite easily with Lattice 2 Workbench and this is what this video is about. We're gonna be learning how to create a placement across these and then a linear placement that we have control over and flatten these and place them along that linear placement just with a couple of operations. This will allow me full control of the spacing of each of these profiles to later export them out. So first of all, let's have a look how will we place these? If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So here I have an object that I want to flatten out and place along one plane. At the moment you can see it's traveling this way and I want to create individual sections and place them across either in a grid pattern or a line. So this allows me to take my design that I've created from a common, which has been taken from a loft, an array has been created with a number of lines, as you can see through there. And those lines, if I hide the common, have been extruded up and created a common with the loft. So I've got all of these parts now. And what I want to do is take those and split them out and put them along one plane. So to do that, I'm going to be using the Lattice 2 workbench. Now the Lattice 2 workbench is an add-on it's available from Tools and Add-on Manager, and you can find it in there. Lattice 2 Workbench has a number of tools to allow me to do this kind of operation. To achieve it, first of all, I need to make a placement of all of these objects, which is quite easy to do. If I click on the common, come up to Lattice 2, we'll see the lattice placement. If I come down on here, we've got placement of shapes, center of mass. And we can use any of these ones in here. So if I click on one, you'll see one placement 
but if we use the placement from common, which has been added on the left hand side here, so this is the common, come down and you'll find an orientation mode and a compound traversal. So if we click on the compound traversal, open that up and choose direct children only, that will create a placement against all of these going across, which we can use to place this object correctly. The orientation mode, we've got children, and we can experiment with this. We've got children, we've got children, inertia axis, and you can see how they've been placed there. These are known as placement kites. So once we get these kites in here, we can create, say, a linear array down here of placements using the lattice two. Linear array, linear array span slash n or any one of these. Let's pick the top one. And we get this linear array here. That's transform it, right click transform and move it out of the way. The kites will be placed on top of these ones, a new linear array kite, in the orientation of how they're shown. So it will match kite for kite. So if we see this orientation, this will be flipped around and placed this way. So this will end up being pointing down this way, which we don't want. So let's click on the placement from common and look at the orientation mode and select something else. Let's go child edge and click off. So you can see what's happened there. Once we're happy with which way this is going to be orientated, remember we can change this afterwards. We can start placing these. First of all, make sure nothing's selected. Let's click on this array and press the space bar just to hide that. Now, this common, because it's got spaces in here, it's known as an array, it's a compound object. We can see that by coming over to the part clicking on the common, coming up to part and check geometry and run check and then come down to this shape content. We open that up, we see the checked object is a common, the shape type is a compound. Let's close that and go back to the lattice two. So what we're going to do is place this now. So the first placement is going to look a bit odd. So we take the common, we take the placement of the individual items in the common, and then we control select the linear array. So we selected the object we want to place, we selected its placement, and then we control select the linear array of where we want it to be. Go up to the lattice two, populate with children, and move children. It's going to complain about the mismatch in the array. So we've got 15 here and five here. Let's hit continue and continue again. So we've got five placements going along there. We can increase that. So let's come in, use the linear array and let's increase the number of counts to 15. So we've got those in there, let's click off. And as you can see, they've all been placed in line. So they're all placed in line there, ready to go. And we can use the linear array and place those further. So span end is 100 at the moment, let's do 500. And we can place these at a distance, 600. And what we've got, if I hide the common, click on common and hide the placement from common and click on the linear array, hide that just collapse that directory, that object there, is that from the front, we have now all these pieces spaced out. So we've created our placed object. Now we may need to export this for such things as laser cut, or we may want to take this and extrude it. For export, well, if I wanted to export this as SVG, I need it to be on the top because when we go for an SVG export, we click on the move common, go file, export. Then if I save it 
and open the file, you can see we've just got basically a line here of the individual items. And that's because it's not in the right plane. We can solve that quite easily by either changing the placements or simple enough is to click on the moved common, right click and transform and transform this onto the correct plane. So bring this around this way and look from the side. Let's bring it around to the right, there we go. We can flip this over, say this way, okay. And then when we look from the top view, we can see we've got that there. And I can click on that moved common file and export, save that. And we get the correct SVG. So we've got the SVG there. Now, if we want to say individual items, then we have to export them individually or write some kind of script to do it. To export them individually, let's close that. So to export these individually, we can take the move common. Lattice 2 has something in here called a parametric downgrade. And we can downgrade the results and put the results into a compound. So we do that downgrade to leaves, that's the one we want. And in here, what we'll have is we have leaves of the move compound. We then can take that, come up to lattice two, come down to explode compound. And now we have the children of the leaves and we have the individual ones that we can move. Now, the good thing about this is that if I come in to say child zero, we have the original one in here, leaves move common. Within here, we have the moved common, and then we have the linear array, which I can come in and zero the span, and it places it all on top of each other. So now what we've got is a number of items that are on top of each other that I can select each one and file export all our child zero save that off and then the next one file export all our child one and save that off when we have a look at the individual files you'll see that we've got the svgs nicely in those separate files but it's going to take us a long time to do that. So we need to write some kind of script. We can't select all of these by control selecting them and come up to file export because those three will be placed within the same file. This is the same as STL. So if I took all of these or step files or any type of 3D object. So if I take all these children, let's take it from child zero. And what we'll do is come over to the part workbench and take child 14 and we'll extrude those and give it some extrusion along the Z axis. So let's bring it this way, Z axis and set this to say five mil. So we've got thickness against those children and we have all those extrudes there. So we can extrude and then export these extrudes individually if we wanted to. We could put a CAM process against those for like CNC. But as said, it's going to take a long time to actually click on one and go file export and go for all those. So we've taken the compound, sectioned it out, placed them. But how do we export these without clicking on one, file export, clicking on the next, file export, etc.? Because FreeCAD doesn't allow us to select a number of extrudes or a number of objects and export those out to say separate STL files or step files. Well, in the next video, we'll go through a macro that will allow you to do this. So this is a macro I've designed to allow us to actually take a selection of extrudes or a selection of shapes and export those out into individual step files. And that can be applied for SVG, STL, etc. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll place a link to the next video in the description or you should see a pop up that will guide you to the next video on screen now. Thanks a lot and I'll see you again.
If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.